Welcome, people of planet Earth and all planets beyond. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Josh, and welcome to Heat Check, our weekly look at the top 10 best selling vintage Levi's items on eBay over the last seven days. Let's get into it. So, this week is actually somewhat of a down week, relatively speaking. Uh, last week was a lot of big sales. There are a few big sales on here, but surprisingly lower than uh, previous. Uh, and this is probably just due to what was available on the market or the timing of things ending, uh, you know, depending on the auctions and stuff like that. So, anyway, uh, there are a few great pieces on here still that you'll be very interested to see. Maybe some more uh, accessible pieces that you haven't seen before. Anyway, the way this works is I do as much research as I can to verify that these sales did go through, that, that the prices that I include are the prices that were actually paid, um, and give you a little bit more information about each item that sells and uh, maybe uh, some uh, cool little information uh, about some of these older Levi's. So let's go ahead and get into the list. All right, kicking us off at number 10, we have this vintage dead stock, 1993 is what it says, 501 shrink to fit denim jeans. Well, these are not actually from 1993. They probably just took the copyright off of the tag and that's what they thought it was. If you go look here um, at the back of the care tag, you can see that these were made in 1997. Not a big deal. They are shrink to fit and they are, which is a, a you know, super desirable these days. Uh, they have a 501 double X, which is really what marketing gimmick at this point. Uh, but a beautiful pair of jeans. This is a pretty quintessential um, uh, probably one of the, the best items from the 90s that you can buy. And these sold for $312 with free shipping, uh, which is actually pretty surprising. Uh, I've started to see the price of these uh, mid-90s or these 90s uh, shrink to fit Levi's go up, up, and up. Uh, so if you can find a way to get your hands on some of these, especially if they're dead stock, you're going to make a lot of money. Um, this is a bit on the lower end of the... of, of you know, uh, price points that we've seen on this list before, uh, but because of a slow week, uh, this one makes it on it, and I'm glad it does because it does demonstrate uh, some of the value that's still to be had, even in jeans that are not that terribly old. These jeans are just about 25 years old, uh, but they're still selling for $312. So keep an eye out for these jeans. They're fantastic and they're beautiful. Uh, definitely something to try to get your hands on if you can. Next up, we have another pair of 501s. Uh, selvage denim jeans. These are probably this is, you're gonna see a little bit of a pattern here that that uh, 501s tend to be on this list at all times because they are the standard bearer for vintage Levi's. Uh, we can take a look at here. We can see the selvage out seam. Uh, we can see that it has a single digit, so that's definitely prior to about 1981. Uh, we can see that it does have chain stitching on the back, so that it uh, is likely older, or excuse me, younger than 1978 or so which is when they uh, went away from single stitching there. So this pair of jeans, we actually have the uh, tag right here. It's hard to read. Um, my guess is that's like, you know, four and maybe a, a one or something like that uh, is the date code. So these are, we can firmly say that these are right in between uh, 1981 and 1978 for sure. Um, these are fantastic looking. They don't have as much deep color as the previous jeans. Uh, but they're still fantastic pair of selvage uh, uh, 501s without the patch which is kind of a bummer uh, but they did sell and they did sell for four hundred dollars plus shipping then we actually have an unusual one these are technically not vintage but i did want to include them uh, because it is a fairly interesting to see them on this list uh, because there weren't so many high and big sales this week in levi's uh, some of these LVC or reproductions actually ended up on the list. Uh, I excluded most of them uh, down here in the four to $500 range, but I did want to include this one because it's really interesting. This looks like it's pretty much unworn. I don't think it has, I don't think it, I think the tags are gone, but you can see it has a stamp of 501. This would be definitely indicative of a repro as if this were original, it would not have a 501 stamp on the back there if it had any stamp at all. You can see these are five. Uh, these are 201s, which was like a cheaper version of the 501 uh, from the uh, late 1800s. Uh, these are beautiful jeans, a great reproduction. Um, there are very few of these uh, uh, legit ones uh, from that era that are still around. You can see the rivets on the back. Uh, on the pockets, you can see selvage down here. Uh, this is a great reproduction jean. You can see that it still has all the uh, 
uh, little uh, buttons for suspenders because that's what it would have uh, been the primary u usage uh, way to hang these would be on suspenders. Um, so it's got it's still got the suspender buttons uh, around it on the front and in the back. Uh, and a, a really cool, really cool uh, reproduction here. Um, obviously, if this were an original uh, uh, 201, this would be on the top of the list because it would be incredibly, incredibly expensive and valuable. Uh, but either way, this one is super cool and sold for. $425 plus shipping. So next up we have a pair of 501s, a pair from the 80s. 80s making a pretty good showing here. Uh, you can see this is super deep dark blue, uh, beautiful color, lots of uh, deep indigo left, probably only worn a couple times. You've got a tag on there. Uh, we actually have, I think we have, yeah, we can actually see the tag. It's got a three digit uh, factory code number, which lets us know this is probably, uh, this is younger than 1981. Um, and you can see the seven and two there would give us, that's our date code, that would give us 1982. Uh, fantastic pair, definitely uh, at least uh, washed once or twice. Uh, and a pretty unusual size, 38, 36, would be pretty su surprising. You get 10% shrinkage of that. Uh, so these are the shrink to fit uh, uh, denim. But uh, you do have uh, a, a lot of shrinkage uh, available to you. Uh, it looks like these have been washed once or twice. Uh, so there's probably some shrinkage that's already happened. Uh, but otherwise, you're a beautiful pair of jeans, and they sold for $500. Now we're starting to get into the big boys. We have a, a 501 uh, again. Uh, uh, this one is a bit older than the other ones, but let's take a look and see if they say it's 60s. We have a, a 2, but we don't have a, a V-stitch, which is what we would expect for like uh, most of the 60s. Uh, so that leads me to believe that if this is 60s, it's at the very end of the 60s, like... Uh, 68, 67. Um, let's see. I do believe these are probably. It says they're big E, so they probably are big E. Uh, I don't, there it is. They are big E. Uh, everything looks like it. Check out. These are big. 46 by 32 looks like uh, a pretty big size. Unusual size. Um, th these aren't most commonly sold. Got some distressing down there. Um, these sold for $550 plus shipping. Um, probably would have sold a little bit better, a little higher, had they um, not been so, uh, have somewhere, had a little bit deeper, and weren't so large. Um, there's just not as many people out there to wear one of these sizes as there are for some of the smaller sizes. Uh, but looks like an incredible pair of uh, turn of the decade, uh, 70s, maybe late 60s, uh, pair of Levi's 501s. All right, breaking from the 501 streak, we have a pair of Big E Levi's jeans. They don't actually include what uh, model they are, but I'm gonna guess that these are 505s. They do have a zipper, and it is a Talon zipper, uh, which this would most likely be a 505. Obviously, you don't see any V stitching. There is no selvage on these. Uh, some of the earliest 505s would likely have selvage at least uh, in some parts of the jean. Um, we're seeing we have some black bar tacks there. Uh, everything looks pretty much uh, as we would expect. It is a big E, so this is probably a very early 70s. Uh, po you know, I don't see anything on the pocket bags, so it's unlikely that these are uh, past 71. So we could definitely see late 60s, uh, very early 70s on uh, this pair of uh, 505s, in my opinion. And like you said, they don't describe what they actually are. Uh, they seem to have a hard time uh, sort of researching it. But uh, these did sell for $635 in auction uh, plus shipping from Michigan. And a fantastic beautiful pair. Look at that. Look at that. Um, I mean, it's sort of whiskering. Uh, but this just the sort of marbling effect down here is so cool where they were bunched up uh, as they were being worn. Not a lot of uh, whiskering around the crotch area, but the marbling down here is super cool. Definitely gives you that, like, uh, chlorine pool look or, or uh, ocean water look. So super cool pair of most likely 505s. All right, back to the 501s. We have a Selvage Big E uh, from the 60s, early 70s, uh, which is exactly what I sort of expect based on what I see here. Uh, we have the, let's see, uh, we have the back patch, which is sort of, uh, which is indicative of that time. We have a Big E. Um, so remember, uh, if it had a little E, it would have been after 1971. We have the selvage. Uh, we can look down here. We can actually see the combination of the orange and sort of bright pale yellow 
uh, thread, which is a bit more indicative of a late 60s pair. Um, no hidden rivets or anything, so we're definitely in that late 60s, early 70s era. Uh, beautiful pair of jeans. Uh, tons of tons of uh, tons of deep blue in there still. Uh, not a lot of whiskering or any sort of uh, wear. Just a little bit on the thighs, um, but pretty minimal for the most part. Pretty deep blue still all across the back as well. Um, beautiful pair of 501s. These sold for $750. It's a little bit more on the, the higher end of the, this era of jeans, uh, probably because of the deeper blue here. The, the indigo blue is really uh, what makes some of these uh, jeans much more distinct and valuable than the others. All right, we have another pair of vintage 501s here, Big E. They don't give us a lot more information other than that. Uh, these look like they're in good condition. Lots of deep blue, kind of hard to say because they're uh, photos uh, aren't particularly bright, but if you look across there, it looks pretty even and uh, pretty nice. I and mean, these are uh, uh, well, well, uh, we have a little spots there in the front, but these are uh, well blued here. We have, um, looks like I see some orange threads. Uh, my guess is these are probably another one of those jeans uh, from around the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, just based on what I'm seeing and, what I'm in, and also what I'm not seeing. They're not showing me. I can't see if there's a V stitch. Uh, so we do have a bar tack here. Uh, so there's not probably hidden rivets on this guy. There is selvage. We do see the selvage here. Uh, so we know that's to be the case. But otherwise, I'm not seeing uh, much in the way. I can't yet. Yeah, it does not appear that there is a V stitch. Though the V stitch would be over here, actually. It would be kind of hard to see. Um, so uh, definitely probably from that uh, late 60s, early 70s era. And these sold for $800.11. Uh, plus shipping, so uh, good, uh, a good uh, value uh, for the seller and for the buyer. These are pretty good jeans, a little bit on the higher end, uh, more of a wearable size for most people these days. So, um, a good pair of uh, late 60s, early 70s Levi's. Now at number two, we have one of the oldest pairs we have on this list. Um, it sold for $916 plus 20 in shipping. Uh, this is actually kind of a surprising sale. Uh, considering that these are a bit older than uh, a lot of the jeans that we've been seeing. Uh, you can see here we have a lot of yellow, the pale yellow threads, uh, suggesting this is older. We have a V-stitch, you can see there, right by the button. Um, in fact, we have hidden rivets. Uh, so these are probably, let's see, let's look at the back real fast. We have a centered um, uh, centered uh, belt loop. So these are probably like mid-60s pair of Levi's when they did bring back the hidden rivets. Uh, either way, these are a fantastic pair of jeans. Uh, I am a bit surprised that they did sell only for $916 plus shipping, but they don't have as much color as some of the other other jeans that we might see. It's a bit more wear. Um, it's, I mean, they're still beautiful jeans, but there's quite a bit more wear and dirt, some stains. Uh, so that might that definitely plays into the price, uh, considering. Uh, but $900 is nothing to shake a stick at, so that's a pretty good price. A beautiful pair of of jeans, uh, mid 60s I believe in my opinion, so fantastic. Now before we get to number one, let us know in the comments below which one of these 10 jeans would you pay big money for, uh, would you pay for any of them? Uh, otherwise, let us know in the comments as well whether or not you like this series, if this is something that you want to continue to watch, if this is something we should continue to make, we'd love to know. Uh, otherwise, be aware that we do have another heat check all about vintage t-shirts that drops on Thursdays. So stay tuned for that. All right, now let's get to number one. And number one, we have this beautiful pair of uh, 501s. Again, 501s dominating this list. Uh, these are late 60s. But I want to point out something to you. Now, these are late 60s, so we've been seeing a lot of this pair of, of jeans. But what we haven't seen is a price uh, this high. These sold for $1,850 uh, with free shipping. By far the most valuable uh, item on this list today, uh, um, uh, doubling what we had previously seen. Uh, but interestingly enough, these are probably younger than the previous jeans we saw at number two. Uh, but I want to point out what really makes the big difference here. We see that there's no uh, uh, there's no V stitch. It's got the number two, uh, no hidden rivets. So these are definitely younger. Uh, we have the S for satisfactory. Uh, for a while in the 60s, Levi's was using S or A. Um, or uh, I believe there's another one. I can't remember the, the maybe it was an F for failed. 
uh, or whatever it was, or D for damage, uh, they would use this letter right there above the 501 to indicate whether or not the gene was in good working order or not, or if it needed to be sold at discount or something. Anyways, these are 36 30s, which is a fantastic size, a very wearable size for most people. Um, it's a beautiful uh, big E on the back. Uh, the selvage is exceptional. Uh, lots of great, we have actually a little printing here. Um, fantastic condition jeans. And that's really where the value of this jean comes in. You can tell that these have probably maybe been washed once. You can look here, you can actually see on the tag, it's a little shriveled up on the, around the edges, so that might that would suggest that it's been washed once. But look at how much deep blue is still left in these jeans. And this is most likely the biggest selling point for these Levi's is how deep the blue gets. Um, and that's why someone's willing to pay a lot more because these are more more close to dead stock um, condition than the previous ones. That means they can their wearer can wear them in the way that they want, um, and they they'll start to fit them the way that they want them to fit. Their body is, um, and they will start to wear in ways that they prefer uh, that's more personalized to them. And that's a lot about that's a lot of the value and the draw of some of these older uh, vintage Levi's is that. Um, they were shrink to fit, they were uh, uh, real indigo, um, or you know, uh, a different type of indigo than we have today, so they wear and wash quite a bit different. Um, and so uh, that's one of the biggest appeals, so that's what a lot of people will pay lots of money for. So at $1,800, uh, these are the number one jean for this week, 501s dominate as they normally do. We did not see any jackets, surprisingly, but uh, 501s dominating this week. Until next week, we'll find out. What else sells for big money? So that was the top 10. Again, the you know big sales weren't really there as much as they were in previous weeks, or at least last week. Last week we had a lot of type one denim jackets. We really didn't see that all much uh, this week. There just weren't a lot of those on the market, and that could be for all sorts of various reasons. But for now, those were the top 10. Hope you enjoyed it, learned a little bit, and uh, maybe you'll find some of these items out there in the wild while you are out there sifting and digging. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.